Hi, Floss Tubers. Welcome. I'm Stitching Scotty. My name is Dottie, and I live in Spartanburg, South Carolina, and welcome to my Floss Tube. It is May 22nd, 2021. And we're outside once again because the day is so beautiful. And I'd just like to welcome everyone. And I hope you're having just as nice a day as we're having here in South Carolina. It's a, it's just great. It's not hit the 90s yet, but it will soon. Um, welcome to It's a Mania. And uh, when I say mania, I mean M-A-Y, as in the month of May, mania. Uh, every past finish I have says May on it. <laughs> So I figured, oh, the month is getting old, so I better, you know, the, I mean, it's like the 22nd. Who would have thunk it? So anyway, thank you for joining us, and I just really appreciate all the nice comments. Um, and, you know, Dolores will be back, and there may be other stitchy friends that may be joining me from time to time. And it's, it's just fun. We just joke around and have a good time, and I hope um, we can... I think she's over her initial shock of having to get in front of the video camera, but it is a little scary at first, isn't it? But anyway, after that, I think she really enjoyed it. But um, <clears throat> anyway, I would like to thank her and thank everyone that commented. So we're going to start out today, and I'm going to welcome all my new subscribers. And I just appreciate that you saw something that caught your fancy, and you just wanted to stop in and, and watch again. And I just want to thank all my regular subscribers that just keep coming back for more and more punishment. <laughs> so, anyway, but thank you for letting me share my cross-stitching. I really, really appreciate it. Okay, today we're going to talk about my past May FFOs. I have, you know, the giveaways, two giveaways that we wanted to share. Um, it was just sharing stitchy kindness. And then we also have an almost FFO. I would have had it done, but hmm, yeah. Um, I just got tired of looking at it, so I thought, oh, I've got to put this down. But anyway, then I have a finish, a whip go finish. So that's good. I met my whip go goals. And whip go is like bingo, and it's a, a card that you make out. Um, for those of you that don't know, Jessie Marie has a Facebook group. And you can join anytime. And you just, it's to, a way to help you finish your, uh, oh, Sheila, I forgot my, Sheila, I forgot my pointer. Oh, my goodness. It ought to be here somewhere. But anyway, um, <laughs> it was a very good tool. That's why I said it ought to be here because it'd be better than my fingers going everywhere. But anyway, uh, the WIPGO board, you put a uh, project in for each square or you can put multiple squares for one project. It's just a way to help you finish your uh, works in progress or whips. So um, this month, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Well, I'm going to go ahead and do it. This month, she called out 19 and 22. So my 19 is rather be stitching. And guess what? I finished it. So <clears throat> it says stuck in the kitchen, much rather be stitching. And the pattern is by Stony Creek. And uh, I got this at a retreat at Pandas Cross Stitch and Beading or Pandas Crossing. And my apron is going to be royal blue. I would have got it sewn on, but I didn't have enough patience today. I worked all day, so it was like, <sighs> didn't want to do that. <laughs> but anyway, this is my finish. I'm gonna do some more ironing. I had it all ironed and then I wrinkled it up carrying it downstairs. But um, I used all the call for colors except there was one symbol on the chart that I couldn't find a number for or a color. So I ended up putting in olive green. No, I lie, I did not put in olive green. I chose to put in a pink uh, X here. There were a couple but of course, I missed that and I did it another color. So, anyway, uh, but there's a lot of back stitch in this. Um, we had to outline the skeins of floss. Um, there were some words that were back stitched, like the words stuck in the much rather be. And I really enjoyed doing this after I got started. And the 
floss papers the gold on this floss papers is dmc light effects 3821 and it said to use two strands well guess what i used one and it was fine mm -hmm. one was about all i could handle <clears throat> and um i did short strands so that was um not too bad but it really does look like skeins of floss i was kind of impressed with myself and let's see and then the needle she gave us rainbow blending thread um i think it was chronic for back stitching so i thought that was great and i didn't use the gunmetal gray um that was probably the color that i couldn't identify it's called read the chart Dottie. but anyway uh this was done on 28 count white um <sighs> I want to say it was a cashel linen. It feels like it. It's not real stiff. It's soft. -er. And uh, so it's going to be finished on the royal blue apron that I got at the retreat. I used two strands over two, except, like I said, for the gold on the floss uh, skeins. And then I used one strand, and I used one strand for back stitching. So that was. A, a whip go finish. So now that means I get to, and where did I put my yellow marker? Oh, it's in my pocket. I brought it. So I get to go to number 19 because my goal was a finish and I get to color that one in. I have three blocks in a row. Yay. So, um, that's that's good. Now my other whip go project was a um, stitching with the housewives with Priscilla and Chelsea piece. It was called Trick or Treat, and I won it off their uh, floss tube. Um, I was I was really excited. I won the floss, and um, something happened, and so Southern Stitches was supposed to send me the floss, and she was so nice. She sent me the pattern also, so I was just so thrilled. And it's Trick or Treat. By stitching with the housewives and if you ever need anything from southern stitchers she's a great great um store to go to and she offers discounts sometimes but when i first saw this pattern i just went crazy over it it uses classic color works and i'm using all the call for flosses because i won them and and i just happened to have them in my in my prize package <laughs> i was so excited now i said i was going to do 400 stitches on this and I sat down with it three separate times in the course of a week and, and two days and uh, just off and on because you know me I like to do this one day and do this something do something some, another day and this is what I've gotten done uh, I did the hat and finished up the candy corns and um, I had 449 stitches and all I needed was 400 but I thought eh, might as well finish the hat so this is done on 28 count uh, black even weave from Fat Quarter Shop. And uh, as you can tell today, I was lazy. I did not iron. I worked hard today, so I figured I deserved a break. <laughs> so anyway, um, this is two over two. And I really, really cannot wait to get this done and get it on my hot pumpkin that I got at Hobby Lobby. Um, the only thing is, is I ran out of, I, I had to steal uh, some of my floss, so I had to buy me another bamboo. So I'll have to fill the hat in here with the bamboo. Man, I need my pointer. Mm. Okay, so <clears throat> we got that one done. So I've met both of my whip go goals. So I get to turn, I get to color in yet another square on my whip go board. And this one's down here on the bottom, Trick or Treat, 400 stitches. So I'm gonna color that one in. Okay, so now I have also finished my, or met my goal for uh, the bookshelf and for Kringle. So when they call those, I'll have those marked out also. So I need to get busy on some of the other ones. Uh, I've just not been, you know, too good on that one. So anyway, um, 
Okay, so we've done that. All right, now I did not work on my monthly orny salve this week because I was so intent upon finishing um, Rather Be Stitching. I just wanted to just get that one out of the way because I was just like tired of looking at it, even though it's beautiful. You know, I'm just short, you know. I need to do things quick. Now, the next thing I worked on was my, um, oh, we're getting too much junk here. Well, not junk, it's good stuff, but you know what I mean. Um, let's see, let's get this fixed here. The next thing I worked on was, you know, I worked on February for so long, my Country Cottage Needle uh, Work Sal, and now I'm actually, I actually had started June from the Country Cottage Needleworks. And dadgum if I'm not holding up the February. <laughs> oh my goodness. What in the world is, I think February has come back to haunt me. Oh my goodness. This is really bad. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, you can tell I'm not even going to edit today either. You just got it naturally. So this is my June pattern. And this is just such a fun, fun pattern. And I had the uh, fabric in my stash and it's 28 count something. Yeah, that's all I know is just 28 count something. And I, I didn't iron it and I apologize. So it's got like a hoop mark on it because I do use hoops. And it's two over two and I got the house. Well, I had the house done, but I did the windows and the door and the little flower up over up under the eaves and I did the roof and the flowers and the trees and then the June and the uh, I guess those are clouds I guess because the sunshine's supposed to go over here I was gonna do that but I fell asleep so there you go but this one it might not take as long as February February just haunted me for the longest time but I really enjoyed doing this one. And I like the color of linen that this one's on. I know it's, I just don't know what it is. But anyway, all I know is it's old because I've had it for a long, long time. Now this group, the Country Cottage Needlework Sampler of the Month Sal, is that not a long name, is on Facebook. And Annabella's um, and Little, uh, not Little House, Country Cottage Needleworks they um, both have, you can enter their group and you can post on there your progress. So I'm going to have to put my progress on there because I'll have to come back to March, April, and May. <laughs> so that's um, something I'm planning to be working on. Then <clears throat> um, I worked on Time to Bloom. And it's in my beautiful um, project bag that my girlfriend made me, my girlfriend Deborah. <gasps> Stitching Granny of 17. I uh, just can't imagine. Um, and she put this beautiful bird. Um, oh, you can't see the bird for the thread. Okay, let's see. Okay, she put this beautiful bird that she applique on there, and then she did some embroidery and uh, some cross stitch also. And sewed this up, and I just love it. And she put me a little label on there, and this was for my birthday. I just really appreciate it. And look at these fancy scissors. I know I've showed you this before, but I am just so proud of this project bag. Um, this is like the first gift project bag I've ever gotten. So I'm just like, oh, I'm so excited. Well, this is my first venture with sulky threads. And at first I was like, oh, I don't know if I like these, blah, 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 you know. And I don't have a lot of sulky threads. So some of the threads in this pattern, I'm going to have to substitute and use DMC. I've just not picked those out yet. And where in the dickens did my pattern go? Oh, this is not good. Um, well, I don't know. It's a mystery. Hmm. Well, anyway, and I hate it when I don't have the pattern to show. And I looked and looked and looked. And everything was all together, or so I thought. Oh, dear. Please forgive me. If I do find the pattern, I will put a picture in it here. But we'll see. Anyway, I started using the sulky threads. I got the Moo the Merrier pack. And as you can tell, I have such an organized way of storing them. I just threw them in the bag. Um... I did this on a piece of white uh, linen that was in my stash. 
and I had the sheep last week and this week all I got was time to blue and that's it so I need to get a little bit more done and like I said I apologize for this not being ironed and I used one thread over two because with sulky one strand or one thread equals two strands of DMC floss so and the coverage is great um, I mean it's 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 really pretty it really is and it, it doesn't seem to knot up or anything and there's my progress and it's a cute little sheep with some flowers hopefully I can find the picture that just makes me irritated that I don't know uh, but I'm using DMC for the few sulky threads that I do not have the color that matches. I hope my dogs didn't eat it. That would not be good. Oh, goodness. Don't you love that the zipper thing? Um, that's just awesome. But it's 12-weight uh, cotton petites is the pack I got. And I got this at the, um, yeah, I did. Needlework Expo. Mm, yes, pre-ordered that, so I'd make sure I had that. All right, and the next thing I had, and I really, really enjoyed stitching this, this is called Stars and Stripes. And I got a lot done on it, considering. Okay, wait a minute, I'm gonna be showing you the graph if I keep this up. Okay, Stars and Stripes Forever, and this is by Cherry Hill Stitchery. This is a PDF. And I got this from Fat Quarter Shop. And of course, I used a piece of unknown raw linen. I think it's just raw linen that I had in my stash. And I just thought, well, these colors look really, really good on this, uh, this linen. And I've been working on it and I still have my needle in there. Oh my, well, that's not good. Let's see, let's do this. Nothing like being prepared, I'm telling you. Okay, um, okay, let's do this. Okay, so I got the word stars and stripes, and I started the bottom leg of one of the stars. So that's my progress so far, and this is 28 count, uh, like I said, raw linen, and it's two strands over two. It uses all DMC flosses, and I'm, I'm on this top row up here, and I've done that. So, um, that's going to be a lot of fun. They recommended 32 count linen, but mm, I like the way this looked better. So, and I'm using a fancy Ziploc bag to store this one in because I ran out of project bags. <laughs> so, nothing like being practical and economical, is there? So hopefully I can get a finish of that before July the 4th. That would be really nice. And that was fun and kind of mindless to stitch. So that's what I enjoyed the most. Okay, now let us talk about um, our freebie. Tonight, or tonight, today I'm offering a free chart, or not offering, mm, I'm giving you the link to a free chart, okay? Um, and that one is free. From the Heart Needle Art by Wendy, and it's called Floral Pin Keep, and it's really, really pretty. Let's see, and my, okay, I can't do that. And there's also a mini celebration sampler free chart, and I'm gonna put these up here. There's the Floral Pin Keep. And then here, oh glare, and then here is the um, mini celebration sampler. So you get two charts. And isn't that cute with the little ABCs, the flowers? They just look springy, and I thought, well, those would be good. And she's a designer that I haven't heard a lot about until Expo. So um, I thought y'all would enjoy that. But I will link her below, but it's www.fromtheheartneedleart.com. And uh, she just has a lot of beautiful, beautiful patterns. She really does. So be sure and go check her out. So I hope y'all enjoyed doing those free patterns. 
Okay, next, let's talk about giveaways. Okay, believe it or not, I didn't get one panty comment. That was really good. I was afraid we'd bring the crazies out. You know how people are. So first we had uh, put on your big girl panties and deal with it, which like I said, is something that we need to be doing. Now, this was a limited edition kit from Lizzie Kate. And if you notice, this is number 246 of 750. That's all that she printed. There's a piece of linen in the back. And the only thing you don't have are the buttons because this is gently used. And you can, the, but, the yellow buttons go on the little uh, boxers. So you could either do cross stitches, French knots, or yellow buttons. I looked for some yellow buttons, but I couldn't find any the right size. And I didn't have time to order any and then them get here after we'd showed it. And I was like, oh. But anyway, but it's a fun stitch and I think you'll really enjoy this. I know a lot of people stitch this. And it'll make a great little pillow or just like a, just something cute, you know, for the girls. So the winner for that one is, <clears throat> uh, from the random comment picker was, okay, where's the P? Okay, Jacqueline, and I hope I'm not butchering your name. Jacqueline Liebfried, L-E-I-B-F-R-I-E-D. Jacqueline Liebfried. Okay, Jacqueline, if you will email me and I will link, I will put my address below. Please don't send me a comment on Instagram because I, I'm a little technical challenged with Instagram. Oh, good grief. Anyway, just send me an email at stitchingscotty at gmail.com and if you don't hear from me um, saying that I got your email in a couple of days email me back okay and I'll try to put a comment on your comment if it will let me sometimes it will and sometimes it won't so um, congratulations Jacqueline all right and uh, some people said they were gonna stitch the panties red so that's okay too all right, then next we have uh, the Quaker Stitch, the Whimsy and Wit Charming Stitches Quaker Series Number One. I have talked way too much today. And this is that, and it's got three of the little charms in here. Make a great small. And these are um, 39 by 39, so it'd be real cute too. Um, this one is going to go to all the stitches, all the stitches. Congratulations, all the stitches. Um, thank you again for both of you and everyone that watches. We really appreciate it. So I'll get those in the mail. As soon as you email me with your uh, name, your real name, you know, and your address, because I think if I send it to all the stitches, I just don't know if you would get it or not, unless it's a company, so. Um, make sure you do that. And if you don't hear from me, like I said, in a couple of days, email me back because I've heard Gmail's a little wonky. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So next, uh, we have haul. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. Let's see. First of all, I went on to, now this first one, my printer went kind of by the end. On the pattern and everything, I got beautiful, um, beautiful, beautiful patterns. Uh, everything's printed out just great. The problem was, is my pattern was like 21 pages, which I was very thankful for because it's large enough to where you can see. Um, let's see, what can I show you where I won't be showing the pattern? Okay, just to give you an idea, let's see. Okay, oh, wait. Okay, that's the size of the squares. So, I mean, that's a, that's a very good size. So, you know, you and there's not loads and loads of stitching on the pages. And you're like, what's the pattern? What's the pattern? We want to know. It's called One Nation Under God, Liberty. And it's by Twin Peak Primitives. And this is it. And notice now my printer was getting ready to run out of colored ink. So, there's like some stripes in here but i just thought this was so so beautiful now lord knows when i'll do it and lord knows when i'll finish it but 
is always something to look forward to. And this is all men are created equal that they're endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But what really got me was one nation under God. I really, really like that above the White House. That made me feel good. And it's got the flag in there, or flags, I should say. There's two of them um, with the 13 colonies on there. And I love this uh, border on the bottom. I thought that was so, so pretty. So, <clears throat> That's going to be something like maybe for next year. But I just, I was, I saw it and I'm like, oh, I gotta, I gotta get it. And the, the pattern is very easy to read. Uh, the color key is, is really good. Uh, Nerndon and her sister, at, um, I guess it's her sister at, at um, Twin Peak Primitives. They have really went all out. And they suggested that you do it on um, 16 Count Ada Oatmeal Rustico. And it's 329 stitches by 310 stitches. Now, I have never done anything that big. So, when I saw that, I was like, holy moly. And, um, yeah. So, anyway, we shall see. But I will not be stitching it on 16 count. I'll be stitching it on something smaller. Um, just because that's really big and I want to make it a little bit smaller even though it's very beautiful, very beautiful. So that's one of my things that were on my wish list for a while. I've been looking at that one every time. Okay, then next, uh, I got, oh, here we go. I got some fabric. Now, this pattern I've had for quite, well, not quite some time, but I've had it a while. And it's from Tempting Tangles Designs. I guess I have had it sometime because it's 2016. Mm -mm, yeah. But anyway, every time I see it, I'm like, oh gosh, I got to do this. And this is uh, Marshmallow Kisses. And I just thought that was just adorable. I'll probably make a Christmas ornament out of it. But then again, you never know. Sometimes I have to wait until I get my piece finished. But this is a tempting tangles. Now, they do use dinky dyes on this, but I uh, don't think I'll be doing that. I'll probably use DMCs or I might use some, substitute some other colors. I'm really not sure. They do have a DMC conversion and it has some French knots or you can use beads, it says. Uh, they use Mill Hill beads and um, they use um, beads for the eyes and yeah. So um, I just thought that was so cute. And it says, you're the marshmallow in my cocoa. So oops, it's wiggly. So I saw that and I said, well, I need to have some fabric for this. Now this was worked on 28 count and my sticker fell off. Oh no, it didn't. What I'm going to do is this is Butter Crunch. I saw this and I thought, oh, this will be kind of cute. And it's 36 count because I wanted mine just a little bit smaller. Oh, the color. There we go. There we're getting somewhat of the color. But anyway, this is kind of close. So I thought, you know, that's that's that'll show up pretty pretty nice in there. Now, I may, need, I may need to change some of those geometric designs in the bottom, some of the goals, but mm, no big deal. But I thought that was really cute. So this may be one of my monthly orny sales this year, like soon. <laughs> Maybe this will be like Jolly July and I'll use it for my monthly orny sale. You never can tell. Okay, so I got that and let's see, did I get anything else? Hmm, yes I did. Okay, then I decided I would order some fabric because I see all these people with all these beautiful fabrics. And not that my shops don't, local shops, because, you know, we have like four. Um, of course, though, one of them right now, she's operating out of her basement, I think. So it, you can't go in and until she gets it renovated. But anyway, um, I have so many shops, I thought, hmm, I need to like get something. So, I ordered this, mm, and I got this from Fiber on a Whim. I ordered directly from her, and it's hand-dyed, 36-count Edinburgh linen. 
and it, I got a fat quarter and it's called parchment. Is that not so cool? I don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet, but I saw it and I was like, hmm, I need to be getting that. And I forget who enabled me on Floss Tube, but whoever it was, thank you, thank you, thank you. I am so glad you did. And this one, like I said, is fiber on a whim, and I will link that below. Uh, she has some things, I think, on her website that you can get. Um, I think it's her website, or was it Etsy? Mm, don't remember. I'll link it below. Yeah, I will. So that's my haul for this week. Okay, and then, let's see, what's next? Okay, oh, I forgot about my gadget. Every now and then, you know, I find a nifty gadget. But first, I have to tell you about my monthly Orny sale. This is part, let's do my plans and then we'll do the gadget. Hmm, I'm getting ahead of myself again. Okay, my plans are for my monthly Orny sale. I'm actually going to work on it. In fact, tonight, this is, is this the one? Is this the one? Yes, this is the one. Okay. All right, this is an Autumn Harvest pin, but I'm going to make it into an ornament for my Halloween tree that I plan to have. And this is a Mill Hill miniature kit, and it's called Wanda's Boot. Now this one's an oldie but a goodie, but I think it's still available. And, mm, yep, should have stuck it up here. I forgot that, hang on. This one's done on, uh, Perforated paper. I almost said parchment paper. Goodness gracious. Okay, this is perforated paper. I've done the cross stitching and now I'm ready to do the beading. This is 14 count. And I used, yeah I did, two strands over one. Okay, because like I said, it's 14 count. Alright, it uses mostly, well it uses DMC flosses. And the design is 32 by 30. You'd think I'd already have it done, wouldn't you? Well, you have to work on something, you know, to get it done. <laughs> but anyway, uh, the graph was small, but they had lots of special instructions. Um, six colors of DMC floss. Oh, and excuse me, I used three strands. Mm, yeah. And you'll use two strands when you put the beads on. And there's one, two, three, four, five five kinds of beads which I have included in this nice little packet with a pen which I am not going to use because if it's not an ornament it's going to be a magnet it'll be one of the two but it'll probably be an ornament since I'm using it for the monthly orny sale and then I've got my two treasure beads oh yeah there we go it's sort of kind of not focusing okay so anyway that's what I like about the meal heel kits is because they come with everything even needles you get like a cross stitch needle and a beading needle. And um, they tell you how to fix everything and do it. But the best thing is my handy little gadget. This is my small bead tray. And I got this at Panda's Cross Stitch and Beading. Oh, uh, it's called a Bead Buddy. And what did I do to mine? Just give me a second. Oh, there we go. Okay. This is it, okay? And you can take it apart. And what I do is I take it apart. It also comes with this. Um, it's like a measuring thing. So you can like measure necklaces or bracelets or something. Probably bracelets or small necklaces, you know, and make them the correct length. But anyway, I just put my beads on here and it's got like a um, foam. They're easier to pick up and they don't run all over the floor and then when i finish you know like if i'm not finished i can just put the top on it and close it because it's my bead buddy and i'm doing the wrong end and the beads don't fall out so it really really is a very handy tool now they have large bead buddies and they have the small bead buddies this is my traveling bead buddy but i also have a large bead buddy and uh, you can get these at your local beading store. So, or Pandas Cross Stitch and Beading. Wonderful, wonderful project. Uh, they're made by beadbuddy.com. 
and I'll link that below too. All right, so handy dandy and nice plastic, you know, it's good size. Like here's my hand and so you see this one's a little bit larger. It's probably eight by six, six by eight, I don't know, something like that. Okay, so anyway, this is gonna be my monthly Orny sound, hopefully. All right, and that's gonna be something I'm gonna be working on. All right, then uh, I decided when I got my order from uh, Rock Hill, because I had to get some cloth I couldn't find anywhere else, all I hear on uh, Fat Quarter Shop is Pat Carson needles, Pat Carson needles, and other floss tubers. I hear Pat Carson needles. And this is called Pat's Favorite Needle and instead of buying a pack of 25 from Fat Quarter Shop, I thought, well, you know, what if I buy them and I don't like them? So they have them um, in a, oh dear, this is not showing either. Okay, so you can kind of see the needles in there. There's two to a tube and they don't cost much at all. And that way, if I don't like them, which I can't imagine not, um, you know, because they look great. I'm not tried them yet, but that's one of my things I'm going to do. I'm going to try the Pat Carson's favorite needle this week, and I will let you know what I think about it. You know, I like the sulky thread, so I'm glad I've got more um, projects that I can use the sulky thread with. Okay, so I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to work on June some more from the Country Cottage um, Needleworks, and I'm also going to work on the Stars and Stripes and hmm where did i put it okay that is not it oh hmm. well oh here it is okay sorry I have too many piles. Okay, so I saw this on Pam and Stephanie's Just Keep Stitching channel. And I was like, oh my gosh, gotta do it, gotta do it, gotta do it. So they're having, Satsuma Street is having a secret sound and it's Wizard of Oz. Well, my name is really Dorothy instead of Dottie. And all my life, I've, ha I've had Scotty dogs. And they kind of look like Toto, the black ones do. But Toto is really a Cairn Terrier. And my Winston is a Scottish Terrier as is Stryker. But of course, Stryker looks nothing like Toto. So when I was growing up, it was like, oh, I see you're not Nas anymore. Well, when have you seen the wizard? Well, uh, where's Toto? You know, all my life, this is what I've heard. So, Believe it or not, though, I do like The Wizard of Oz. It's one of my favorite movies. I saw it as a play when I was like seven, something like that, with my cousins over in Asheville, North Carolina. But anyway, they have a Wizard of Oz sale. Yay! I'm so excited. So when I saw that, I was like, click, put that add to cart, as Pam and Steph say. And in the cart, it went. And guess what? I got the PDF for the first one. A little bit late, but better late than never. So, you know, I'd, I'd uh, gotten this star sapphire fabric that I showed you from Witchell some time ago, and I'm gonna put it on this. That's what I'm gonna stitch it on. And it comes in six parts. And part one, I will do this and the borders, okay? And then, I can't show you because it's a secret. If you want to know, you got to buy your own. But anyway, then chapter two, they, she did chapters. Chapter two is May the 28th and then so on until July the 23rd when we'll finish with chapter six. And she has a nice little thing from Frank Baum, uh, a little quote from him. Um, and the charts are very easy to read. Um, they've got large charts and they've got like a small one that's got everything on it that you need to work with. All the colors are DMCs. Uh, they've got different skin colors that you can give Dorothy uh, a different skin color or hair color. Like if you wanna give her red hair, brown hair, blonde hair, black hair, she's got the DMCs for that. And um, she's got dark skin, light skin, so 
yeah but anyway um the stitch design is 184 by 184 and it's 13 by 13 if you stitch it on 14 count or 28 count and she used the green sapphire which no i bought star sapphire but it's got a green tint to it i liked it and it was like eh, yeah so anyway um i can't wait to get started on that this week you know yes i need to start one more thing don't say a word <laughs> okay so i'm excited about that i think i just like starting things um who knows and believe it or not i got my threads together now this is the neat pack okay um I want I bobinate all my flaw well not all my flaws because that's not bobinated. But anyway, out of the colors she had, now you know how you always pick your colors out and you there's always one that you don't have. Well guess what? Not this time. It was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten colors I did not have. And I had all these. Aren't these neat? Don't you love the way I just organized them so neatly? <laughs> But anyway, um, I will be going to my local needlework shop to pick up some thread. Or if I cannot wait, I will have to hit Hobby Lobby or Michael's. Don't know which one. But anyway, um, I'll be going shopping for that. I've got my list right here. And it's in the bag. I just have to find me a little project bag to put it in. Mm, yes. Okay, so I'll be working on that. And I also got... You know, I went to the Leela May uh, Stitch Retreat. Well, I didn't go. I did, but it was on Zoom. So to me, that's not going because I Zoom a lot as a piano teacher. But anyway, I got my chart from Priscilla and Chelsea that went on the top of my little barn on the farm. Okay. And what I got was my fabric because I needed a piece of uh, dyed fabric to um, denim looking to match my uh, stitching in the garden or chick in the garden. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my memory is really good these days. But anyway, I've got this. So I'm hoping I can do that and it uses um, color and cotton flosses. And I've got these. I borrowed the red to use in something else. And there's plenty. There's eight yards, you know, on, on one skein. So, um, I just have these four colors I need to use. And um, then I need to put some white with it because I used up all the tusk. So, anyway. So, because i got to have white chickens, you know. Everybody's got a white chicken. So anyway, hopefully I'll get that started so I can get that done and get it stuck on my little barn and start um, displaying it because I'm not going to display it until my little uh, on the farm is done. So <clears throat> I've got that. And then I have a partially FFO. Oh, I don't know how you'd say that. A partial FFO. That's more like it. Okay. <clears throat> um... This was also from a retreat at Panda's Cross Stitch and Beading. I've been to every one she's ever had, and she's had a lot. This is the black and white garden pin key from Hands On Design. Isn't that beautiful? Now, when I was starting to sew it together, I realized, oh, I need to sew this on and this on and do all my other little ditzy things before I sew it together. So, I stopped sewing it because I was out in the middle of, you know, I was out at an appointment, so I didn't have time to, um, well, I didn't have the room to just spread out and just, you know, oh, let me just cut this with my pinking shears and blah, 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 and do this and do that. Okay, um, this was on, yes, it was, um, Dirty Cashel two over two and it's 28 count linen that that uh, Donna gave us <clears throat> and I'm going to show you the sides one at a time okay this says within this key and needles and pins and it's two strands over two we'll start at the top and we'll go up and I love the little quilt squares when she brought this out and showed it to us we were like oh, we love it we love it we love it so you can see where my threads hanging where I stopped because I'm joining it together on the sides 
Okay. <clears throat> then on the other side, it says, so I may stitch while others sleep. And so there's, so I may stitch, and then there's a blank spot, and that is for the large wool square and then there's like a little fence and then there's a smaller place where you place your scissors and tack ribbon and yeah it's a placement for your scissor tip protector so i'll put that there and it says while others sleep so what we did was we stitched as much as we could at the retreat and then i sewed I mean, I stitched and stitched till I got it all sewed together. And then you came home and you put interfacing on it and ironed it. And then you um, were supposed to put your felt on there or your wool on there first, which see, I've left it open so I can do that. But I've been catching the threads on the side and just um, stitching that together. You know, not going into the linen, just stitching that. And I learned something. If you use a sharp needle, it does not work well. Did not know the, when I came out that I had a had picked up an embroidery needle instead of a cross stitch needle. Mm. And so that didn't go very well at first and had to tear some of that out. But hopefully I'll get that on, but I've got a whole nother side and a half to go. So this may take a while because it's taken a lot longer than I thought. I think I worked on this like an hour and a half already. And that's as far as I got because I was being very, very careful because I put a lot of work in this. So here's my little, um, I'll show you the wool square. Oh, and there's little charms also in ribbon. Yeah. So I can't wait to get this done because it's just kind of languished, you know, in the pile. And it's so pretty. I mean, it needs to be out where I can enjoy it and others can enjoy it. So, uh, Anyway, I um, thought I would do that. Now this does have some Smyrna stitches on it, like on the quilts, um, and I'm pointing to something in the middle. And then it also has some satin stitches on the Ohio Stars, and then some cross stitches. And I think that's it, yep. So, um, yeah, it's, yep, just satin, Smyrna, and um, Smyrna crosses, yeah, that's it. But it's really, really pretty, hands-on design. And I think that's still available, so you'll have to check that out, because this pattern was in 2015, so it should be. <clears throat> All right. Uh, but that's really about all I have for today. Um, yeah, my video's getting a little longer than what I usually like them to get because they take forever to upload. But I just want to thank everyone for dropping in and, um, you know, commenting. And I love to hear about you guys. And uh, I'd like to hear where everybody's from, you know, um, just to kind of see because... Based on some of the names and things, I was like, hmm, I wonder where they live. So, and then some things where people use their floss tube names, I had no clue. So, <laughs> it would be nice to hear where y'all live. So, comment and tell me where you live. Maybe a little something about yourself so I can get to know you because you're getting to know me. Well, y'all enjoy your weekend, the rest of it, and I hope you're having as good a weather as we're having. And uh, I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.